Hello everyone and welcome back to another tactic video. So today we are going to be looking at Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough side. Now, obviously the team has underperformed this current season. This is mainly due to uh, signings and players leaving. They had a lot of really good players uh, that happened to leave them uh, this season. But if we do look at some of the underlying numbers, we can still see the team is performing at a really, really high level. We can even see that their XG is a high level and they're still they're actually underperforming their XG by nearly four by just over four we look at their xa and they're heavily under they're heavily underperforming this they've conceded nearly 10 more goals than they were expect over sorry nearly 11 more goals than they should have so it's it's a lot of stuff where you look at it and you go all right this is just kind of like really really rough on the season and it's still a really really good team so the team is awesome i really like the system it's really interesting they really use that inverted fullback role which is fantastic to see so we've we made sure to incorporate that um, they used to use advanced playmakers up top. They create this lovely box in midfield, and it's a cool tactic to look at. We're going to obviously talk the tactics, go through my little tactic thing. I'll show you guys some pictures, and we'll discuss that more. But yeah, no, it's just, it's interesting to see. It's a different style uh, of tactic. It's it's definitely fits that new mold of teams using back fours in defense and back threes in possession, so it really fits that. And it's just really interesting to see, and it's just one of these things where it's bringing a lot of these Barcelona-esque ideas into a team in the championship, and it does really work well. You do look at where they sit in the XG table for XG allowed. They're in the they're in the top eight for that. We look at uh, expected goals for they're in the top five. So they're a top five team in scoring. They're a top eight team in defense. So they're really, really good in these two. Categories. It's just it doesn't want to work. It seems this season, and I think it's gone down to poor goalkeeping for one. I mean, you can't concede eleven goals is really bad. I mean, it's just there's a lot to talk about and a lot of issues that have happened. So hopefully they improve and stuff like that. But they need to keep Carrick in charge and they need to really keep just working on this team growing because it is a good team and it is a team that can really make these playoffs and hopefully go for a run. So if it clicks later on, maybe they'll make a bit of a run. But I don't know if this season they'll make the playoffs. But if they bring in better players next year. I can actually see them really making a run for it and improving and getting that shot again. So let's get into things. We'll talk tactics. We'll talk through the thing itself, and then we'll uh, we'll show you guys how the results did, talk through the instructions, and that'll be it for today. So everyone, we're going to talk uh, quickly about the tactics of Michael Carrick's team. So some things to first discuss and talk about are Carrick is still a very new manager. There are things that with his team that are very interesting, the the possession, the inspirations of Barcelona and other things like that are really cool to see and are really neat in terms of what he's trying to do as a new manager. There's a lot of good ideas and there's a lot of smart decisions being made to help support this team. But the problem is, is that there are still tactical issues that need to be worked out. The team's over-reliance on crossing, the team's defensive frailties, their inability to properly press, and the defensive problems of the of the middle too. So there's lots of stuff to talk about, and there's lots of issues to still be hashed out. But as a manager, there's really good ideas that Carrick has, and there's great ones that are working and progressing as a manager and improving his style of play. So... There's stuff we'll discuss. We'll, we won't really talk about too many of the issues and things like that, just because it's... I don't really want to talk too much about the problems, but we'll have to discuss a few. But I'd rather just kind of keep it simple um, and just talk about some of the basic stuff. Again, I know I, I love doing this active videos for you guys, but I have some I need other stuff to do now, so... Going to be a little more... Not as uh, in-depth as they used to be, just because I want to... I, I unfortunately have other things to do. <laughs> it's how life goes at times, but... So the thing that I mainly, I think, want to discuss is Carrick's likability and similarities to Xavi Alonso's, not Xavi Alonso's, to Xavi's Barcelona team. So one of the big things is, is that Carrick and Xavi both follow a lot of the new ideas, which are moving from a back four to a back three in possession. This is very common nowadays. You'll see lots and lots of managers using it, and it's just very popular now. And it allows you to have a solid defensive structure in defense, but also then have a solid attacking structure, which allows you to create overloads out wide, or allows you to create uh, to create opportunities to play the ball th in between the uh, in between the defensive lines, uh, get players into half spaces where there normally wouldn't be a player, 
it's there's lots of things like there's endless amounts of things you can do by changing every system does things differently everything is again there's so much variety in football tactically so there's a lot of things but what Carrick does a lot is his teams heavily move between being a 4-2-3-1 and a 3-2-5 those are the very very common ones he does he also looks to transition into a 4-4-2 sometimes when they go long or 4-4-1-1 as well as a um as well as a 4-3-3 at times as well when pressing. So there's a few different shapes, but the main ones to know with Carrick are 4-2-3-1, 4-4-1-1, and 3-2-5. Those are the three shapes you should know. 4-4-1-1 is common in a lower block. 4-2-3-1 can be seen pretty commonly. Slash 4-3-3 is pretty common in the press. And the uh, 3-2-5 is very common in possession. So those are the three that you should know and be accustomed to because those is that that is what you'll be seeing when it comes to this tactic in this formation. So, first thing we need to talk about is distribution. Now, when Carrick first joined Millsboro, he focused heavily on using long balls. This was because, mainly, the team itself didn't have a lot of uh, time to do it. He took over midseason, so he focused using long balls a lot. And you could see the team kind of setting up like this, but then shifting the play over. So they would kind of shift it over to one side, where you'd have the team uh, be able to be here. So his target is the 9. It's that same thing we talk about. We see a lot of teams. Clusters. Hits. Goalkeeper hits it into the nine. Boom. He knocks it down to this guy. These guys run in behind. They offer opportunities. So very, very common. He did it a lot more. Now they're looking to build out of the back a little more. They're looking to go short. And when they and they build out in their three structures, so they have the three guys kind of together. You'll see the, the three, two, five shape become something. And you'll see the box midfield. And you'll see this shape a lot more with the team. So then you'll see this shape when they build out nowadays and the three in the 3-2-5 or 3... I mean, this guy's a part of it, but the 3-2-5 shape where they're building out in this, which is a lot more of what they do now. So you'll see this. They'll go... They'll use the possession a lot of these three, usually looking to get the ball into one of these guys before going out wide, where you'll see them start to create wide overloads using this deeper triangle here to pass the ball before advancing the ball into higher positions where the triangle becomes then between these three players here. So usually deep progression, it's these three, forward is these three. That tends to be the two kind of dividers in, in the groups of these players. Now, when it comes to um, comes to going direct, they still will go direct at times, which will be usually into this guy, who then has two guys around him to knock the ball down to. And that's pretty common there. On the right side, when it comes to it, it is the same thing. Usually the deeper progression is these players here, these three here, Forward progression, it tends to be these three players. So nothing crazy, nothing out of the ordinary. Pretty common with all those. It's it's nothing too special tactically from Carrick there. The the stuff that is more interesting is when the team transitions to the final third, which is where I'd say the team is the most interesting uh, of a championship teams I've looked at so far. So we'll get into that. Now, one thing to know about Carrick is the team is still, unfortunately, too heavily reliant on crossing and crosses into the box. This is somewhat of a problem for the team. But it's something that also is quite interesting because it's not something you'd expect from a high possession side. Now, these two in the middle here, Housen and Hackney, have been incredible in possession. They've been really, really great to have so far and been really, really useful. Um, sorry, just trying to have to set this up. Kind of, it's it's a little lopsided. It's kind of wonky uh, to look at. Keep is usually back here, kind of like this. So this is usually kind of what the team, I'd say, looks like. It's a little janky, a little wonky at times. This guy here, we'll give it to the keeper. This guy here's job is to stay wide and provide width and push and uh, create space, create room in the half spaces for players to get into. This guy's role almost it operates as a shadow striker at times. You see Rogers here, you see Greenwood here, and they're guys that can play as the nine. So they're playing as the 10. So they push kind of high being that secondary striker. You see McGree or more playmakers tend to be on the left and they tuck in and sit in this left half space role here usually right in between the fullback and the and the center back or much more centrally right by the full right by the center back you, but one key thing is they're almost always in between the defensive and the midfield line of the opposition this is pretty key to them because it's quite important is to getting them in the right position to be able to play balls through teams and have open players because as long as there's someone there we'll set up a team here set up a team here so you guys are a little more understanding of what's happening Let's 
to give you a better idea of what's happening. Usually, teams over here will try to deal with these people. So the nine, this guy will deal with the nine. He'll probably deal with these guys. So they'll be like this. They'll probably drop a midfielder in to deal here. And now these guys have to deal with this. What do they want to do? All right, they're going to deal with these guys. Now he has to drop in here, which probably won't happen. He'll probably stay out wide or one of these things like that. It, it becomes an issue because how do you deal with this? So the striker, if the striker is going to press, he's usually going to come with, and he's usually going to come with as well. And this guy has to worry about this guy because he's kind of back here in a back three. So see what I mean? There's always going to be this issue of someone usually gets left open because the keeper is being used in possession. So there's going to be something. But normally there will be space if we just set them up in a normal shape, kind of like this, which is what they'll be like. There's going to be this space here. So this box, which is between the lines. This kind of box here. This is the space between the lines, which you'll see McGree try to operate in a lot right? So he's going to try to find opportunities in this space, usually around here, in this space, looking to try to find areas where he can get on the ball in this area and play passes through, or pull someone here, play passes back out wide where there can be crosses played into the box. So that's pretty important for him. That's what his role is. Now, these guys in the middle here, their job is to usually recycle and move possession around, They'll get played into here. They can go wide. If this guy steps, he drops in. They can go forwards here. They'll be great recyclers. These two guys are really, really key in terms of moving the ball around and recycling possession, while these two look to drop in and offer other options for these guys to move the ball around. And you'll see this four become quite a box at times, moving the ball and shifting around in the middle once it clears through these central defenders. Now, if they can't go forwards, they will go backwards, and they'll go all the way to the keeper because they are happy to play in possession to the keeper. This then can force teams to press onto the opposition, force them into these areas, now creating space in behind for these players. So if these guys press high and there's nowhere to go, Stefan can hit it long into one of these guys to knock it down, or one of these guys can drop in. If they can play it to him, he might step, he can drop in, ping, ping, boom. Now they have an advantage in this area here. And they can play through you really quickly because of the way this box is set up. There's a lot of opportunities for one-twos and other things like that. So that's quite dangerous. As I said, though, the problem is they really do struggle to get this final ball kind of in behind to this striker here so for him to shoot. So a lot of times when they have it, they'll play the ball kind of in this U shape here or even this U shape here, getting the ball into these wide areas before the player is here and able to cross it into the box for someone. And you'll see that happen a lot more. And it's a bit of an issue with the team, but it's something that just does occur. And that's kind of what we're seeing. Now, there also is quite a common chance that these guys take shots from distance in these areas here, which you'll see pretty commonly. Uh, if you watch uh, the league, the, the cup game they played against the lower opposition side, Housen had one or two shots from distance that either went in or were really close and hit the bar or something. And he was asked to take shots because when teams back off, they're 100% asked to take shots from distance to pull teams out onto them so they can get better crosses in or get balls played into behind into space for their striker to run onto. And that's what you'll see there. When it comes to defending, though, the other interesting thing about Carrick's team is, is that they will press high, but they will also sit off in a mid block. Now, this is obviously dependent, but there's some triggers that really depend for this team of when they engage and when they don't engage. And this is pretty important to the team because they will be aggressive and try to hound the ball down and do stuff, but they will also not be aggressive as well, which is kind of the interesting thing. So if the other team's got the ball in possession and they're here playing around like this and they're just kind of kicking it around their back four like so, like this, they're just kind of passing around. The team will happily hold off and just shift side to side, right? They'll just shift and shift and shift. And they'll wait until the opportunity arises, maybe a poor touch or something like that. And then they'll go a little more and press to force you to go backwards or go forwards into more pressure where they have midfielders here. And that's what they tend to do. Now, it's not a perfectly good system. It's not done great this season either. It's really struggled for them. And one of the big issues that comes from this is the inability of the defensive positioning and defensive understanding of these two players here. They're not great. That's what they're great in possession, not in defending. And this leads to problems where the team itself will, they'll be not noticing kind of people moving in behind them and they'll see a guy in front, press the guy in front of them like this. He's pressing and he'll press the guy in front of him like this, not noticing there's a guy, that was supposed to be the ball, there's a guy like this just to clip the ball into behind. And that will happen at times for this team when they're sitting off in this mid-block shape because they will engage and try to cut off the short passes, but it then leaves people behind that these, these guys won't notice allowing balls in behind them, which aren't great. So you'll see that happen. 
but normally the team just looks to kind of sit off and allow them to play before finding a pressing opportunity, which usually is the ball out wide or a ball backwards, which will lead to these things. Very common pressing triggers for most teams, but it's something that you will see and is not uncommon uh, for them as well. Now, finally, when it comes to defending much deeper, the team does tend to defend pretty, uh, pretty much back in a 4-4-1-1 uh, one, one shape. They'll sit off, kind of these guys will be here like this, like this, or a 4-4-2 at times, but they'll just kind of shit off in these shapes here to finally be the final bit of defensive uh, stuff like that, and that's kind of where they'll sit off and do those things. So, just a quick little overview of some tactics and things like that in terms of the team play and other stuff along those lines. Um, the other thing uh, is also I have a little clip to FM to show you guys just of the Boxman field, which we'll just uh, I've talked about and stuff like that, so you can kind of see that, which is important too. Is that something you guys will want to see and a little understand a little more? And you'll see that leading to a long shot and just some of the shape uh, as well. So, yeah. We guys are in the little tactic section. We'll talk about the tactic now and to have that little snippet on top of it to show you guys. So here, uh, I just wanted to quickly point out one of the examples talking about that kind of that the midfield in terms of the shape of the players coming in. So you can see kind of the four midfielders here in this shape here. You can also see the back three that's created as well. And you can see the, the wing back pushing up. So you can see here, playing it around, as it goes here, these two come forwards, these two come over to this side, and Luke Thomas pushes up to create that three shape that we're looking for. Now the ball recycles backwards, which goes back to that backwards passing that we talked about. Clark gets the ball now. You have this back three, the two midfielders in front of them. You have McGree now coming inside. You have Luke Thomas pushing high. You have Clark playing it into McGree, who's now inside, like a center midfielder almost. And you can see, again, that kind of the four group of these guys there. Luke Thomas pushing high. I'm sure if we zoom out, go to the analyst, we can see the winger keeping the width here. And now we can see McGree coming in. And there's that one, two, three, four, five, the two, and the three. The three, two, five we talked about. So just some things you can see. You can see Luke Thomas plays it off, and then they come inside again, and you have the one, two, three, four. There's your box of the four. The mid, the center back stepping up to help assist in possession at times. This guy here, also he would do that on this side. Housen gets it, gets into degree, who's able to pass it around a bit, and a shot from distance. But still, it's kind of the thing we're talking about in terms of they're able to move the ball around, they have those opportunities in the middle of the pitch, and with that winger talking inside and the wing back pushing up, they have those extra bodies in there, actually those numbers to create overloads and the ability to have a free man. Because if we look and we go back to just director, you can see because he's pushed inside, look at this. Now Luke Thomas is free. Now he's played it out. You've got one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, one guy there, but there's a free guy. These One of these two isn't marked because then he leaves this guy open. So what's he going to do? Mateus marks there, meaning that there's an open man here. And now Hackney gets free because the guy steps to him. See what I mean? It's that thing we were talking about of because they transition out of that four into a three and push that a player high, they always are going to have these overloads and players open in the middle of the pitch to pass to. All right, guys. So here is the tactic. Um, it is this is how it worked. So it uh it came out finishing in sixth place on eighty one points, the sixth best attack and tenth best defense. Um, pretty good overall. We had Marcus Force. Uh. Force, I still don't know how to say it right, getting the most goals. Um, we had Greenwood getting the most assists, and Luke Thomas with the highest number of, um, oh my god, the highest n number of assists. I can't, I could not speak for some freaking reason. I don't know why my brain was just short circuiting. But yeah, it's really, it was good to see. I mean, the team, I think, played quite well in terms of all the, the stuff and did really, uh, did a really good job in that sense. I mean, I'm just pulling up now. Um, and uh, we see here that uh, lots, uh, sorry, the, my webpage just reloaded. Uh, but we look at uh, uh, Latte La, he's got the most goals uh, as the striker position. So that is the same thing here. Again, this is the current season versus past season. So not the same in terms of the number of goals scored is not going to be a perfect match. But still, Latte La's got the most. And you've got Isaiah Jones uh, coming in next. When you look at assists, we look at Morgan Rogers, who played out on the out on the wing, and I'm going to assume Greenwood did the same. He played as the 10 mainly. I actually, where did Rogers mainly play? Um, in the middle. Rogers has actually mainly played as the 10. So, yeah, 
that is that same thing. So the 10 mainly getting a lot of the assists. So that's fitting perfectly fitting there. We see him playing in the last five games. He's played as the 10 in four of them. And then one of them he played up top against Millwall. So we can see that's very true. That fits that one as well. We even can see that Crooks and Barlasser on the assists as well. Um, being the deeper line playmakers. And if we go here, we see, yep, there you go. You can see Housen getting on in terms of that. We can also see Isaiah Jones up there. Uh, pretty boom, boom, there you go. The 11 goals, nine assists, so pretty high up there as well with them. Uh, we also see them Silvera, which I guess just didn't play as much. Um, yeah, he did not play like at all. <laughs> it's one of those things with the game. Yeah, Greenwood up there, House and McGree. I don't know where, where did McGree finish him last up through. So yeah, you can see it's definitely pretty similar stuff in terms of that. I mean, these two mainly hitting right on the head. Luke Jones, the same position, I believe. I don't know where uh, Silvera played mainly. I'm assuming he's playing up top, right? We can see here he's playing out on the on the wing. Thomas is going to be that full back there, so he's getting more of the uh, the assists. But still, just good to see similar uh, people getting those assists and getting those things like that, which is nice because you always want to make sure they're the same and kind of on the money in uh, those departments. But that's always good to see the goals again, as you we were saying. These guys getting in on the goals, which is pretty common as well. You see Rodgers, who's played that 10 role, getting in a lot of the goals and the assists, which we had Greenwood here, so pretty good in terms of those numbers. Striker getting a lot of goals, a little assists. Then you had uh, Isaiah Jones getting a good mix of both, which we can see here as well. So it's nice to see. There's a good mix of those things there. We even see Matt Crooks, who's playing in that midfield role. We have Hayden Hackney, who played there. But yeah, it's good to see. You just got that nice mix of things as well, and everything kind of working in perfect harmony just all those things that's nice to see it makes me feel good to see that stuff is on the money and matching pretty well for what we want to see with the team so i'm very very happy with that to make sure that everything is connecting uh quite well so that's always good now if we do look at some of the stuff like the uh stats around the team so if we go to team detailed we can see average possession, 52%. The team itself averaging around 53% possession in real life, so very similar. There, we can go and take a look at goals. So they obviously scored 79 on the season, but that would be, what is that? Uh, 79 divided by 48. Do some math. Averaging about 1.6 a game in real life. Uh, they've scored just, yeah, not too far off that as well in terms of goals, uh, in terms of goals scored, cause they are on 46 goals, which in 33 games. So just a little above that as well. So yeah, we're definitely hitting some of these numbers pretty similar, which is good to see the overperformance. That's going to be a different thing here. We're on eighth in scoring. They're on sixth in real life. We're 10th defensively. If you look at a uh, defensive numbers, they're a little higher. They're a little, um, uh, they're a top eight defensively, so we're top ten. So similar. We're not we're not too far off a lot of this stuff. We're pretty similar in these numbers, which is really, really important to see that we match kind of the same thing to what we're looking like in real life. Now Middlesbrough aren't performing. We kind of hit the numbers that we were expected to perform. But uh if we do look on home, we can see the data hub. The team actually uh was should have finished a little lower down, but the team did overperform slightly in terms of where the executive position was, which is not always good to see. But we did also finish up here, while in real life the team is currently sitting much further down the table. So that is the difference here, that we are finishing kind of probably where they should be, compared to other stuff like that. So that's really good to see. Um, as well, it's always important just to, to find that stuff um, and see where those things lie. So that's just great. You know, those numbers is always really important. Um, in terms of the stuff, the uh, performance... Skyba Championship, they obviously lost in the playoffs to Southampton. You guys probably saw from uh, the bit in the top right, which shows they lost in the playoffs, unfortunately, Southampton. But hey, good enough to make the playoffs. Knocked out by Sheffield United in both cups, which is pretty funny to see. So it's kind of annoying, but it's still pretty funny to see both cups. They were knocked out by, by the same team, third round and second round. Obviously, real life, they went a little further in one of the cups, but still pretty funny to see that happened. Um. But on top of that, yeah, it's pretty similar. You can see that stuff. Obviously, we talked about the how the team played out in terms of how it looked like itself beforehand. But yeah, just good stuff to see. Um, in terms of the tactic itself, this is what it looks like. Um, it's very similar to some of their tactics on this as setup as well. But it's just kind of one of those things where I think because of the team being the same, it's going to look very, very similar. Um, but yeah, so on the right, we have that role, which is mainly played by the right back. So... 
that's been played by a few different characters, but last season it was mainly played by Tommy Smith. This season it's been played by a bit more host of characters, but that's the inverted fullback role, so there's no additional instructions on him. The superkeeper, superkeeper on sports, maybe been Sidney Diang this year. Bit of a drop off for him compared to Zach Steffen. Your right center back is center back on defend. Your left center back, ball playing defender on support, who is ball playing defender on defend, who's got to stay wider, so he's there to help support attacks on this right side. While this guy is doing the same thing on this, sorry, on the right side, he's doing the same thing on the left side. Um, you saw the shape shape's pretty static there, so I don't want them dribbling more or anything like that. They're all going to hold position with their whole position on, which is good to see. Um, they're just going to pass ball a little more, which is nice. So wing back on attack is on stay wider. We want him staying wider to really create that play and really stretch it there. Remember when we see these guys attack, um, move into these roles, we see them moving a lot more. So it looks like this. Remember, it looks a lot more like that in attack. So that's kind of what we're hoping to see. He shifts wider as well, but that's what we're kind of hoping to have an attack with that, which is why he's a wing back on attack here. So if we look, actually here, I'll just reload this, make it easier on myself. Game. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, I think it's version one. No, this is version, this is version two. So I did two, there was two tactics I on, I couldn't remember which is it. But this is version two. Um, it won't be the in version two. But uh, this is, so that's it. So left back, wing back on attack with stay wider. Your two positions here, DM on support with no additional instructions and deep blank paymark support, no additional instructions. These fit pretty well, pretty fluid in the midfield in terms of their movement. Wing back on attack, cut inside with ball. This is mostly because this is usually kind of been played by a second striker or someone who drives inside and you see them scoring a lot of goals. So we want to make sure that they are pushing inside when they get it as they do like to drive to the line and try to get crosses in or score which is why we have them cutting inside the 10 just get further forward they can act like a second striker at times and even run in behind the striker who lays the ball off when he kind of drops in so we want them getting further forward pushing that line higher and maybe getting in behind there not as much as a shadow striker i would say you could sort of see that if you do look at players like um where is rogers uh, is he not in the first team? I guess he's not. Yes, yeah, so did he get sent out? Um, ah, Crooks left for a uh, Real Salt Real Salt Lake. Ugh. Did Lewis O'Brien join? I guess he... Is he still on the team? Yeah, he is. Oh, he just didn't do very well. <laughs> I'm trying to see... I guess, where is... Where is Rodgers? What the hell? Um, Alright, I don't know where Rodgers is. Is he in the second team? Never mind. I don't know where this man is. I can't seem to find... I'm probably just overlooking him. He's probably right in front of me and I just don't see him. Yeah. But he could do a bit more of that role. Even Greenwood, you see here, he can definitely play as a striker. And also here, so he's a bit more of the shadow striker role, which you could kind of play. But I felt this position worked better. The shadow striker would leave, would uh, would stop him from being that box midfielder we're looking for and kind of play over here. Too often, the shadow striker would go higher up. So that's why we have him on attack mid, uh, attacking mid on attack. On the left side, we have advanced playmaker on support, which is sit narrower. Again, he tucks in here and kind of creates that playmaking role, that higher playmaker that we're looking for in the midfield. So that's almost the same as if we had an advanced playmaker as a 10, but defensively it allows us to defend a lot better in that kind of 4-4-1-1 shape, which is much nicer to see. And finally, up top is just advanced forward on attack. No additional instructions there. But with a positive mentality, this is to ensure we have a higher level of possession. Not loads, but some. The team looks to play down the wings with the side on the left having the overlapping player. They're fairly narrow and they do look to pass into space. This is to get the ball in behind to some players with a shorter passing distance and a higher tempo. They have overlap on the left and they look to play down the sides with playing out of defense as well. No additional instructions here. Finally, in transition, they look to counter and counter press. Now, do you remember as we talked about earlier, they do like to play some long balls as well. So they don't always have the same build out shape, which means that we don't want to select anything here. Finally, the team plays a bit more of a higher, uh, higher, more advanced mid block. So you could at times have this on higher, but I felt that it didn't really work at times. So 
I have standard with step up more, which I feel suits it a lot better. Trigger press is not 100% more often as the team is in a mid box. We don't want them getting pulled out of position here. And present goalkeeper short distribution. We want them to kind of push up a little more when there is that short press to force the long ball. They also are aggressive. And we want them to be sure to get stuck in as well. So those are all your instructions there. So that's the tactic. That is what we're looking for. I hope you guys did enjoy this one. Um, and yeah, be sure to, uh, be sure to let me know if there's any questions you have about the tactical roles or anything like that. Be sure to answer them in the comments and thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys in the outro. Thank you so much for watching today's tactic video, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this one on Michael Carrick's Millsboro side. Now it wasn't the most perfect one of smashing the league title or anything like that, but I just think that this year with the weaker side, and it's clear even with the underperformance and the numbers in real life, that unfortunately, as good as this team may be in terms of tactically, it just doesn't really want to work in in those other senses of it. So I think there's a lot of things that have kind of sadly seen them underperform in the game and in real life. But, you know, that's how it goes. Not everything is going to be perfect. But we still made the playoffs, finishing in sixth place. Any one point is not too shabby at all. And again, losing Southampton, not surprising. It is surprising to see Norwich go up, but still. Lost Southampton is not the worst thing in the slightest, especially for a team that is competing with many others with that um parachute payment money gone so really proud of them and how the tactic did happy with how it looked happy with how it was executed and all that fun stuff so thank you so much guys and remember if you did like this one like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future tactic videos if you guys also want to check out some of our let's plays that we have going as well as some other tactic videos you guys can do so by following on the description below for let's plays or for at the end of this video, will be links to more realistic tactics or just any random FM tactics that I have tested and created. Remember, all tactics I've made created by me, and you can thank guaranteed on that one. They're all done by myself. And hopefully you guys do enjoy this stuff because uh, I've loved it, and it's really, really awesome. But uh, next time we focus on Mark Roberts' Coventry, and I hope you guys look forward to that one because I am as well. So thank you again, everyone. I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next one.